Hello everyone, you're watching the channel Stories of Our Life. Friends, make yourselves comfortable. I wish you to truly enjoy listening to this life story. Until yesterday, Sandra was quite happy with her life. It seemed to her that all circumstances had worked out for the best. She had her own business, a handsome son, and a comfortable apartment. Yes, she had broken up with her husband, Sandra had no female happiness, that is, the other half. Although, of course, it used to be. However, Sandra claimed that she didn't need a soul mate, because she felt herself to be an integral and independent person. All events in her life were going great. However, the trouble came from unexpected place. Her son, her only joy, fell in love with Mildred and decided to get married. Certainly, it was an expected action on his part, Roy was already 24 years old. He had recently graduated from university with a degree in economics and then returned to his hometown. Sandra often joked that it wouldn't be long before he brought home a bride. She was a little apprehensive about that. What if it would be some divorced woman with a child? Sandra didn't want anyone else's grandchildren. She dreamed that Roy would meet a nice, educated girl with well-off parents. It would be altogether wonderful if the bride had her own apartment, but as luck would have it. Sandra believed that Roy would find a decent girl. She pinned her hopes on his intelligence and taste inherited from his mother. But no, Roy chose Mildred. She worked at Sandra's beauty salon and looked like a skinned cat. Sandra showed sympathy for the orphan and she molested her son. And how did Roy like her? You can't look at their couple without crying. Roy is a handsome young man, tall, with a charming smile that made girls go crazy at school. Mildred, on the other hand, was too ordinary. Skinny, small-faced, all gray and angular, like a common teenager. Nothing about her was bright, conspicuous, attractive. And Roy had fallen in love and was getting married. Sandra was very angry with her son and herself because of that. She wishes she hadn't accepted Nancy's offer and taken this froggy girl to work. Although, who could have known it would turn out that way? Sandra has been the owner of her own hairdressing salon for five years. She has worked as a hairdresser all her life and she adored this job. She was the one people wanted to get their hair cut and they signed up for it a month in advance. Sandra regularly took all sorts of courses, mastered new techniques, not sparing effort, time and money. And she became one of the best one in the business. She absolutely did not understand masters who know how to make four haircuts and repeat them day after day, not paying attention to the shape of the client's face, or his age, or hair structure. She didn't just cut hair, she created. Her clients were always satisfied with the result, leaving generous tips. And Sandra needed the money very much. After all, she was bringing up her son alone, and he needed a good education, preferably in the capital. And he should have been dressed no worse than others there, so that the boy was not ashamed of the fact that he came from the provinces. And Sandra did her best. Of course, there were problems. Her colleagues did not like her, they sat idle, while there was a queue for Sandra. Often at the reception desk, they ask only for her. When customers were offered another craftsman, they simply left. Sandra was the envy of those who hid and destroyed her tools, spreading rumors about her. And Sandra's tools were the best and most expensive. Sandra put up with it for a long time, and then she decided to open her own salon. Her best friend, Nancy, had long hinted that it was time for Sandra to move on. Yes, how much longer, she repeated, you are a master of the highest level, all the girls from my work only go to you, and they will continue to do so, even if you raise the price in two or three times. No one will do it like you. And you work on the flow in a regular salon. Nancy was right. She was a pediatrician. Sandra had been cutting her hair since her college days, when she practiced her first haircuts and coloring. Now Nancy's colleagues, including the hospital administration, also went to Sandra. And the woman said, it's scary, and it takes a lot of money. And anyway, what if it doesn't work? I'll be laughed at. You know, they don't like me in our environment as it is, they think I'm too impertinent. Let them think so, Nancy replied, you'll do fine. 
You yourself are already a local brand. All that's left is to open your own business. There will be lots of clients. You will train young girls, raise good masters yourself, and there just will be no competitors. I promise you. Sandra listened to the advice of her friend, she really was cramped in the barbershop where she worked. Sandra had hired two talented girls and within a year her salon became one of the most popular in the city. She rented a bigger space, hired two more hairdressers and even a makeup artist. She had never been happier. Now Sandra had everything, money and the opportunity to do what she enjoyed. She managed to send her son to study at the best university in the country to become an economist. Yes, the tuition was expensive, but Sandra thought it was an investment in Roy's future. And so, Roy came home. Oh, how Sandra looked forward to her son's return, how she missed him. She was ready to soar with joy just from the thought of being able to see her son every day and not just hear his voice on the phone. Suddenly, he announced that he was going to marry Mildred. This Mildred had one good quality, she really was a talented hairdresser. If that had been the case, there was no way Sandra would have hired her, no matter how much Nancy asked for her. Sandra often remembered the day when Mildred first showed up at her salon. The week before, Nancy had called her, our manager has a niece who recently graduated from technical school as a hairdresser. Maybe you could take her on? Sandra grimaced. I do not like to take recent students. They know nothing, they are afraid of everything, and I have to think about the reputation of the salon. She's a very talented girl, Nancy assured her friend, she has a red diploma, she's the best in her class. But she's an orphan. But it's not like I have an orphanage for the needy, replied Sandra sharply. Well, at least look at her. The headmistress is very worried about her. Her mother died three years ago in a car accident, her father is gone, she's all alone. She's only 21 years old. If you don't like her, you'll turn her down. Just see what she's like in business. All right, let her come, said Sandra, but tell her not to get her hopes up. I prefer masters with experience. My criteria are strict, and if something goes wrong, I will refuse her, even if she is the niece of the president. Mildred arrived at the salon an hour before it opened, as she and Sandra had agreed. The woman examined the girl with a stern look. Yep. If I decide to hire her, her looks will need some work too. Sandra thought that people who made others look beautiful should look like the cover themselves. And Mildred was no good. She would look like a sparrow that happened to be in a flock of bright, exotic birds in front of the other girls. Good morning. Hello, Mildred, Sandra looked sternly at Mildred, first let's talk to you, then, if I'm satisfied, I'll give you an assignment. Mildred nodded. Yes, yes, thank you. I brought my diploma too, a red one, and also I have certificates. I took extra courses, and here are the diplomas, the competitions. Everything from college, I won first places. Mildred pulled out a folder of documents from her bulky, shabby bag and immediately dropped it on the floor. The certificates flew in all directions. Sandra rolled her eyes. Great start. Looks like I'll have to disappoint Nancy. Her girl is good for nothing. Her place is a regular barbershop, where pensioners are cut at the cheapest prices. But she still decided to talk to Mildred, to keep her conscience clear. Sandra decided not to kick her out right away. What if she was offended? Later she regretted her decision. But something compelled Sandra to be magnanimous. Mildred answered all questions with confidence. She knew at what angle to hold the scissors, the types of modern dyes, in what proportions to mix the dye and oxide to get a shade of ash in the hair, what to do if a client wants to become a blonde, but dyed her hair all her life henna. Mildred clearly knew her way around the subject. Not only that, she was passionate about it, a quality Sandra appreciated in her employees. The director liked it when employees were enthusiastic about what they were doing. Sandra smiled as she asked one last question. When the girl had managed it as well, Sandra gave her a task. Cut my wig, Sandra pulled it over the mannequin's head, which she kept for just such occasions. And how should you do that, confused Mildred. 
and this is how you see fit. Surprise me. You have half an hour. Sandra sat down in her chair and watched her work. She was well aware that she was making the applicant nervous, but it was an additional task. Customers are different, they ask questions, scold the master if they think something goes wrong. Let the girl get used to it, nervous and sensitive natures in their business has no place. At first Mildred was nervous, her hands trembled, she often looked at Sandra. Then she relaxed, became engrossed in her work, and even hummed something. After half an hour she smiled and demonstrated the result of her work. Sandra examined the wig skeptically. Hmm, Pixie, a good choice, in vogue now. And the bangs, you see, are lengthened, Mildred nodded, you can do different styles. Mildred slicked the bangs up and then pulled them down over the mannequin's face, see, a very different look, and it will grow back beautifully. Sandra grinned, and I like it. Mildred's eyes lit up again. Will you take me to work? I think so, Sandra nodded, only as an intern first. Of course, the price tag on your work will be less than the other employees, but it's normal practice, and I'll keep a close eye on how you work. If anything goes wrong, please don't be offended. Really, Mildred jumped happily, I'll be working at the coolest salon in town. I don't believe it. Sandra laughed. Mildred's joy seemed childishly touching, as if she were a little girl who had received a doll for the new year that she had long dreamed of. Had she known then that this girl would enchant her son? And it all began so innocently. They put information about the new intern on the salon's website, and Mildred got her first clients. They were all pleased with her work. Sandra said that she cuts hair really well, knows how to bring her vision to the client, suggests interesting options. Within a month Mildred became a full-time master. Then Roy came back. Sandra was looking forward to her son very much. Sandra alone knew how difficult it was for her to raise him alone, without his father. Roy had a father, of course, his name was Elias. Sandra had met Elias shortly after her graduation from high school at a dance club. She went there with her friend, Nancy, who was in medical school at that time. Sandra was always prettier than Nancy and was well aware of it. Sandra was called a real beauty. She was ruddy and tall, round-faced, with long hair. Nancy was absolutely different, she had a boyish haircut, dressed simply, and didn't have the shapes that boys loved to admire. Deep down, Sandra gloated a little when another guy paid attention to her instead of her friend. Yes, Nancy was smart, she went to college. But Sandra was beautiful. If there are two girlfriends, then one is smart and the other is beautiful. And you don't know which is better. Elias behaved differently from the other guys. At first he tried to meet Nancy specifically, but she rejected him. At that time, she was in a relationship with her classmate, so she wasn't interested in other guys at all. Sandra was surprised with her decision. Leo, Nancy's chosen one, she frankly didn't like. She thought he was small, with a big nose and ugly glasses halfway down his face. Sandra even compared him to a worm in a bathrobe. Although, in Sandra's choice, and they were perfect for each other. Sandra, on the other hand, liked Elias immediately. He was very tall, with huge hands, which she liked madly, with the face of a French actor and without glasses. Such people don't wear glasses, they do sports or sing with a guitar. Better yet, they do both. Elias then turned his attention to Sandra. She showed a little of her inaccessibility, and then agreed to dance with him. The first dance was followed by a second and then a third. He walked her home, and the next day he was waiting outside her door with a bouquet of tulips. He did play sports, soccer, and he played the guitar wonderfully. Sandra was fascinated, Elias was actively courting her. He clearly wanted a family, not a flingy relationship, as Sandra's mother thought. He kept talking about a future wedding. Elias wanted a family, a wife, a spacious house with gorgeous interior. Sandra listened to this and was fascinated. She was lucky. This was not a man, but a real lucky ticket. This guy had the right values. It soon became clear that Elias was not working or studying. 
He had wealthy parents, and he was happy to spend their money on Sandra. This bothered her. After all, the boy was already 25, and he was too immature. She asked how Elias saw his future, and he answered that he would have his own business. Of course, at the time he had not yet decided on the scope of his future business. All he cared about was that it would bring in a lot of money and not put too much stress on him. Life is one, he smiled, I don't want to waste it working for anybody. People graduate from university and get jobs for the lowest wage. That money is only enough to pay for utilities and food. And it goes on like this until retirement. And I want to live differently. So how? Sandra asked skeptically. I want to go out and relax while I can, Elias explained, so I have something to remember later. And only then, business. Daddy will help, he promised, everything will be all right. Don't worry, my kitten. He kept calling her kitten. Sandra liked it. She felt like a cute, fluffy, playful kitten next to him. Nancy didn't like any of this, she thought Elias was overly frivolous. Sandra, do you know, what are you going to do with him next? He's finished school and that's it? What does he know how to do? Sit in cafes, dance in clubs, and play songs on the guitar, asked her friend. Oh, and your Leo reads books all the time. Are you having fun with him? You could go crazy. You won't see anything but your hospitals in life. And we want to live differently. Elias says you can go to a warm country and rent an apartment. Everything is cheaper abroad, so there's enough money. Imagine, you go out in the morning, swim in the sea, drink coconut milk, and you have no worries. What a fool you are, sighed Nancy, so alone, over a broken coconut. Sandra preferred not to listen to Nancy. What does she even understand? Elias is smart, and he's absolutely right. Why do they need to live working all the time? She liked the idea of the Dolce Vita, the sweet life Elias was always talking about. They would just have to wait a little while and they would go to the warm islands to enjoy the sun, the sea, and each other. But they did not go to the warm islands. First, Sandra found out that Elias was cheating on her. It happened in the most trivial way, when in bed he called her by another name. Rose, I had something special with you tonight, he said, kissing her forehead. What Rose, she shouted, have you forgotten my name? Ah. Uh. Sandra, I'm sorry, Elias smiled innocently, I got confused. Confused how, replied Sandra in shock, with whom? With Rose, he leaned back on the pillow with his hands behind his head. Elias seemed to enjoy her reaction and anger, kitten, you understand, I'm still young, I want to get out. And we didn't agree to anything. I didn't promise you anything, did I? What about the sea? You said you wanted a family, and children, Sandra felt her heart stir. It was beating so hard that its pounding could be heard even in her temples, you told me all that, Elias. I want to, Elias shrugged the broad, muscular shoulders that Sandra always liked so much, only I haven't decided with whom yet. Wait a while, maybe I'll choose you. What? Forget me, Sandra took her clothes and ran out of the room. She wanted to run away from him, never to see that stupid grin of a winner again. I wonder who else he had. All night Sandra was walking around pointlessly and crying in pain and resentment, and in the morning she came home. Her mother didn't ask her anything. She must have realized that her daughter was in trouble. A month later Sandra realized she was pregnant. She called Elias to tell him. Maybe he would come to his senses that he and Sandra were meant for each other. But Elias reacted differently. Pregnant? From me, he asked. From whom else, replied Sandra angrily, from the Holy Spirit? And what do you want from me, he said indifferently. You are a father, Sandra was confused. So, Elias's voice sounded calm and even indifferent, you know, it's too early for me to have children. For you, too, as well. You're not a little girl, you should know how to solve such problems. Better yet, don't let them happen. What do you mean? Abortion, Sandra grew cold. 
Yes, she didn't want a baby, but the thought of an abortion terrified her. There was, after all, a living human being inside her. To kill it? Maybe it really was the only right decision, but it was too hard to make it. Yes, abortion, Elias replied, if anything, read something about contraception. I was sure you were on the pill. You never brought it up once. If you need money, I'll give it to you, but if you decide to have the baby, I'm sorry, it's your choice. Sandra dropped the call and cried out loud. Yes, she hadn't asked him to protect herself, but all that talk about having children, she thought, was what he wanted. After all, he's a man and should take responsibility, shouldn't he? It turned out that the responsibility was now hers alone. At first she thought about abortion, read everything she could find about the operation, talked to Nancy. She lied about an unwanted pregnancy of a girl she knew. Nancy got it right. Sandra, think for yourself, she said softly, make whatever decision feels right to you, and I will always and in any case be on your side. Sandra decided to give birth. But she could not imagine how she would live if she got rid of this child. It seemed to her that she would spend her whole life thinking about what he would be like, imagining how she would take him to first grade, how they would learn letters together, or take a walk in the park. Let it happen the way it had already happened. Sandra's mother accepted her daughter's decision extremely disapprovingly, there were scandals and yelling. You're going to ruin your life and mine as well. How are we going to raise a child? Your salary is pennies. My pension is only enough to pay utility bills and medicine. It's okay, we'll manage," Sandra answered stubbornly. Roy was born on time. The birth was easy. Sandra was even surprised. She expected it to be much scarier and more painful. Now she had Roy, the meaning of her life. Looking at his tiny fingers, his blue eyes, his neat nose, breathing in the scent of his hair, she realized that she had made the right decision. If she had listened to Elias then, there would not have been this miracle. Sandra's mother was overwhelmed with tenderness when she took her grandson in her arms for the first time. He is so pretty. You didn't give birth to him for nothing. I was wrong. A new life began. Sandra worked hard to provide for the family. Her mother babysat Roy. The boy grew up and pleased his mother and grandmother. A smart, well-mannered, totally trouble-free child, for his sake Sandra studied, developed. For his sake she opened her salon to have money, so that he could learn and get a good profession. When Roy graduated from high school, she sent him to the capital. Of course, it would be hard to live so far away from her son, but the boy had a lot of prospects. But Roy made the decision to return. It's nice in the capital, he told his mother, but it's still better at home. There is less competition. You know, I just thought, in the capital, of course, I'll earn a lot, but the expenses there are really huge. And it's easier in my hometown. I don't like the capital way of life. Time passes too quickly. Sandra agreed with her son's decision. Secretly, she was glad that her son would be there for her. He would get married, Sandra would have grandchildren, and there would be a big family. Sandra did not tell Roy that she suffered from loneliness. Her mother had died three years ago, and she lived alone now. Now her son came back and took over his old nursery. Sandra was happy to feel that he was home, to hear him making his own coffee in the morning, taking a shower. But her happiness didn't last long. One day he stopped by her beauty salon. They wanted to go shopping. Mildred was just cleaning her workplace at the time after another client. When Sandra came out of the office, she saw Roy chatting with Mildred. The girl was red in the face, but from the look on her she seemed very happy. Sandra sighed. She wasn't surprised by this, Roy is a handsome and polite guy, like his father. It seemed to her that he was just determined to say something to this simple girl. And she, naive, took it all at once seriously. It was funny to see it. She looked like a chicken next to a peacock next to him. Have you met, asked Sandra, this is my son, Roy. Yes, it's a pleasure, said Mildred, and she blushed even more. 
Nice to meet you, too, Roy replied in a bass voice, Mildred, we'll talk again later. Mildred nodded and got to work. Walking out of the salon, Sandra looked around. Mildred was looking behind them, not taking her eyes off them. Or rather, she was looking at Roy. Sandra felt sorry for her. She would suffer if she fell in love. Roy didn't need to, he had seen so many girls in the capital that Mildred would never compare to. Even if he changed her appearance, she would still look like a mouse. A week later Roy had already come to the salon, not to his mother, but to Mildred. Sandra asked what was going on. Mildred quickly disappeared behind Roy's back. Mom, we're going on a date, why? On a date, questioned Sandra, and how long have you been going on dates? Second time, Roy took Mildred's hand. Nothing, Sandra frowned, we'll talk at home, go ahead. Sensing no catch, Roy and Mildred left. Mildred walked in small steps, hunched back and tilted her head. Sandra felt like throwing something heavy at the girl, like a new hairdryer, but she held back. What was it about her that pleased Roy so much? What qualities did he see in her? After work, the first thing Sandra did was call Johnny. Can you imagine, he went on a date with your Mildred, she said, and what should I do now? Be happy, replied Nancy, my Leo, for example, doesn't go out, I'm worried about him. Leo is Nancy's son. In Leo's family all the men were doctors, and all were called by the same name. Sandra thought this was a consequence of her lack of imagination. Leo graduated from medical school and worked as a trauma surgeon. He was strong unlike his surgeon father, who was very thin. Leo was interested only in his work. He was so sincerely passionate about it that he forgot about his personal life. Nancy was troubled by this. She feared that her son would be alone forever. It's a good thing he doesn't go, Sandra sighed. At least you should have found some girl, Nancy said quietly, and what don't you like about her? She's a nice girl, you said so yourself. I did, but I judged her as an employee. I don't want her to be my daughter-in-law. What's wrong with that? She's an ordinary girl. It's not like he fell in love with a supermarket clerk with three kids. And not with a boy. Nancy, she has nothing, said Sandra, she lives in a communal apartment. She has no parents and no support. And outwardly, to be honest, she looks like a rat. You're obviously exaggerating. I've seen Nancy. She's a normal girl. Anybody but her, Sandra felt herself shaking with excitement, maybe I should fire her? Wait. Give them time, maybe they'll meet a few times and that's it. I, on the other hand, would be glad if Leo could find a girl like that. She's modest and hardworking. But Leo seems to be married to his work. It happens that way. My husband is and worries that the dynasty will be interrupted on him. Take your time with your dynasty, resented Sandra, I'm telling you about my grief. Calm down. If they are not destined to be together, they will separate, and if there is love there, then don't interfere. Sandra mentally scolded her friend. What love was there? Mildred just decided to be comfortable with her new family. Her mother-in-law has her own business, Roy has a great education and prospects. She wants to make no effort and live a posh life. Sandra will be able to convince her son that Mildred is not his match. But Sandra she was not able to change Roy's mind. Mildred and Roy went on regular dates, and Sandra's son was happy. And what did he see in her? She's not even pretty. Sandra absolutely did not understand Roy's choices. One day she decided to talk to her son. The two of them were having dinner together. Roy came in after another meeting with Mildred. He looked particularly dreamy, as if he was physically with his mother and mentally with his one and only unearthly love, a gray mouse named Mildred. Roy, Sandra began, I'd like to talk about Mildred. We're doing fine. Sandra held back a sigh with difficulty. She hoped he would say that they had broken up or, he had met someone else, with a dowry and good parents. That they were doing well was absolutely not happy news for a mother. 
What are your plans, inquired Sandra, or rather, you both. Roy wondered. I think we're going to get married. Sandra almost dropped the fork with which she was eating her favorite Caesar salad. Married? Has she already been pregnant? No, why immediately pregnant, wondered Roy, it's just that I love her and I want to live with her. Why? Son, this isn't right, Sandra could barely contain her emotions. She had to explain elementary things. And how easy it had been as a child. Put her in a corner and the issue was solved. Why wrong, asked Roy naively, we love each other, we want to live together. So we should get married. What's wrong? No need to rush, Sandra artificially showed a smile, you're still young, in love. You'll have plenty more girls. You're not in a race to see who gets married first. No, mom, we've already decided everything, Roy felt no sarcasm in his mother's words and continued to eat his salad calmly, maybe in a month we'll go to apply for marriage registration and then move to our house. What do you mean at our house? Sandra put her fork away, you mean you're going to live at our house? Why not, uh, queried Roy, we have a big room. We'll fit. My couch folds out. Sandra imagined Roy and that Mildred making out on the couch, which Sandra, by the way, had bought with her own money for her son, not for his girlfriend. She began to feel bad. Roy, I don't like it. I'll be honest, I wanted another wife for you. You understand, she's not for you. That's for me to decide, Roy frowned, and I've decided to marry her, and I certainly will. At least get a job first, advised Sandra, otherwise you're sitting at home with your diploma. They'll take you anywhere. You'll make some money, and then you can get married. Sandra hoped it would work. Roy had really been sitting at home for a long time. If he started working, he would have less free time. He would mingle with educated women, among whom he would surely find one that suited him better than Mildred. To be honest, a practical Ella girl would be better than his Mildred. Would he bring her into the house and Sandra would have to share the apartment, the bathroom, the kitchen with her? Share both the apartment and her son. Mom, I want to have a vacation, Roy rolled his eyes expressively, you know, I've saved up money in the capital, and I have something to live on. I haven't seen anything but studying hard in all these years. You are so much like your father. Elias didn't want to work either. Sandra knew he had ended life badly. When her son was 12 years old, he drank himself to death. His parents died, there was no money, and Elias had no habit of working. Having squandered his inheritance, he sank to the bottom. Sandra was not moved by the news of his death. And now Roy says he wants to rest. However, that may be the first bell. You have to work, said Sandra angrily, and getting married is for later. I don't have to support you in my apartment. You don't have to support us, Roy shrugged, Mildred's working, I'll be there soon, too. Take it easy. I've worked a little in the capital, and I've got money. Do what you want, Sandra rose sharply from the table, but know this, I will not bless you with this marriage. She retired to her room. She felt like an elderly countess whose son had decided to marry a backyard girl. And what was to be done? Throw her son out of the house? And where would he go? No, he'd better be under her care, or he'll only be influenced by that Mildred. This way, she would find the right words to point out the shortcomings of her daughter-in-law and hint that Roy needed someone else. She was comforted by the thought that her friends had pretty daughters who could be invited to visit from time to time. Maybe this way Roy would realize what a mistake he had made. We should be wiser, act cautiously but decisively. A month later, Mildred moved into Sandra's apartment. The landlady made it clear at once that she was not happy about her son's fiancé and considered her a temporary guest in their home. Mildred was afraid of Sandra and preferred not to be seen by her. Sandra was fine with that. If Mildred was afraid of her, that meant her respect. Roy did not notice his mother's feelings. He speculated about a future wedding, that they would certainly buy an apartment, plan to look for work, but did nothing to achieve it. Mildred quit her job. 
Apparently, she was smart enough to have less overlap with Sandra at work. Sandra accepted her application quietly, but was glad in her heart that this mouse understood something. Maybe she'll leave their house just as quietly when she begins to realize she's trying to jump over her head. Her ceiling is some locksmith. They say, they make good money. Be smart, Sandra Nancy assured her, maybe he'll be happy with her, and all you talk about is kicking her out of the house. Why would you do such a thing? And if your son had brought one, Sandra went on the attack, would you watch quietly, too? I don't know yet who her parents are, what kind of heredity there is. What if she gives birth to alcoholics? No one is born an alcoholic, Nancy was angry, if you act like this, you're really going to get your grandchildren started drinking alcohol with such a toxic grandmother. A couple of weeks after Roy moved in, he gave his mother another piece of news, he and Mildred had applied for marriage registration. Sandra smiled coldly. And what's the money for the banquet? With mine, I suppose? No, I have some, and Mildred earned some, too. Am I invited? asked Sandra. Yes, of course, Mom, Roy humbly sighed. On the eve of the wedding, Sandra went out with Nancy to find a gift for her future daughter-in-law. We need something with a hint so she'll get it right away. Well then get her a funeral wreath, Nancy sighed, and a ribbon that says you're not happy with her. And that would be nice, Sandra smiled slyly, but there's some decency. I don't understand why you're reacting to her like that, Nancy squinted at her friend, she's a normal girl. Nancy, you have to understand, she's not for Roy. Did I invest so much money in him for nothing? Did I stay up all night for nothing? Did I work for nothing? Did I give him the best education? I raised a guy like you to bring that hairdresser into the house? And who are you yourself, wondered Nancy, a Hollywood star or a Nobel Prize winner? Sandra was forced to admit that Nancy was right, but the woman had no intention of giving up her position. You know I've accomplished a lot. I have my own business, by the way. Okay, businesswoman, let's go to the jewelry store, maybe you can find her something there, Nancy pulled Sandra by the hand, toward the chain jewelry salon, it's inexpensive and there are some pretty things. Sandra took a long time to choose jewelry and settled on a chain with a pendant in the shape of a gold heart. Just the right thing, she smiled, there's gold here, and it's cheap, but she should like it. I don't think she knows what it is. You're a strange woman, Nancy sighed, and they went to the register. The wedding was quite modest. Friends of Roy and a couple of Mildred's friends and Sandra were invited. Mildred was radiant with happiness. For a moment Sandra even thought she could be called pretty. She obviously liked the pendant, probably thought her mother-in-law was trying to get on good terms with her that way. She put it on at once and kept looking at it, stroking it with her fingers. To herself, Sandra noted that she was not mistaken, this Mildred apparently had no taste. Now the three of them lived together. Mildred left early in the morning and returned late at night, and on weekends she attended some courses. From Roy Sandra learned that Mildred was learning how to do makeup. Why I wondered Roy's mother, the profession is already there. Why else would she need to learn? She already knows everything. She wants to be a makeup artist, Roy replied, by the way, she's pretty good at it. Didn't she show you her works? Mildred Sandra didn't show her work, she preferred to talk to her as little as possible, probably feeling annoyed by her mere presence. No, I didn't, said Sandra, I think it's a silly idea. The competition is huge now, every other makeup artist. I am, after all, a professional and know a little bit of the specifics of the market. As expected, Mildred regularly cooked in the kitchen. Sandra considered the kitchen to be hers exclusively, and showed with all her might that Mildred didn't belong here. Whenever Mildred tried to boil soup or make cutlets, she would settle down on the corner couch and comment on her sister-in-law's actions. Don't touch that frying pan, dear. Be careful with the stove. It's a cooktop, and you're throwing the pan. You'll scratch it. Who's going to buy it? The dishwasher doesn't load like that, it won't rinse anything. What, you've never used one? Mildred looked frightened at her mother-in-law and remained silent. 
sometimes Sandra even got a little embarrassed. Mildred acted like a girl being abused by her parents. Her lips quivered, her eyes practically wept, her eyebrows raised in a tragic house. Sandra tried to think that she was acting above all for the good of her son. He needs another wife, and the sooner this becomes clear to everyone involved in the unfolding tragicomedy, the better. Roy finally found a job, got a job at some firm selling plastic windows. Sandra was unhappy. He'd spent five years at a top metropolitan university to work for such a small salary? His mother was sure Roy would become at least a deputy director of a major bank or get into an international corporation. And he would make a huge amount of money. But he chose that stupid windows. She periodically tried to talk to him about it, but Roy would walk away from the conversation. I'm pretty okay, with everything, he repeated stubbornly to his mother, both with salary and the conditions. What else does one need to be happy? Sandra was desperate. How much money had she spent on his studies and life in the capital? You could have bought an apartment and a car for rent. And him. The woman was disappointed in her son, she was waiting for him to come to his senses and finally start using his diploma for its intended purpose. Sandra was only happy with her work. The salon brought a good income, and there were lots of positive reviews in the internet. To tell you the truth, some clients were still looking for Master Mildred, who had cut their hair so successfully the last time. She's gone. I don't know where, Sandra replied. True, there was one unpleasant episode, Sandra had to fire one of her best employees, Sharon. She worked in the salon almost from the moment of opening, she was a good and talented craftsman, but she began to treat her work indifferently. It was as if she got used to being considered a star and relaxed. One day Sandra summoned her to her office. Sharon, what is this, she asked, three negative reviews on you. They took a star off our salon in the city rankings. What am I going to do, Sharon frowned at her carefully styled eyebrows, one woman wasn't happy with the volume. She wanted more, and I gave her a smoky haircut. The other screamed about the color. Yes, it came out with a yellow tint. But what am I going to do? The third asked not to cut it very short, and you shaved the back of her head, finished Sandra, Sharon, we must hear the customers, not just cut as the hand will take. We don't have that kind of principle, you know? I know how to work myself, Sharon looked proudly at Sandra, there are new trends, I want to work in the new way I want to work, not your outdated methods. Methods, worried Sandra, you've upset three clients, and I've had to fix your work for you, by the way, which has been rather difficult. Everything was fine, though, maybe something happened to you? Nothing happened, the master shook her head, it's just the way I work, these three didn't like it, and the others loved it. Sandra forgave Sharon, though, slightly reduced her bonus, but a week later the woman ruined her client's hair again, deciding to try some new haircut. The woman was angry and wrote a negative review. Sharon tried to defend her position. It's a normal haircut, she argued with Sandra, everyone goes this way now. And if anyone doesn't like it, it's just a lack of taste. Sandra made the decision to fire Sharon. It wasn't easy. She was very attentive to her employees, she even raised them and paid them well. But there was nothing to do, Sharon left and said at parting, nobody needs your rotten salon. If you don't appreciate creative craftsmen, that's just your problem. Sandra was surprised. She knew she couldn't do anything else that would hurt Sandra's business. An ordinary worker suddenly thought she was a genius. It happens in their business and not worth listening to empty threats, enough reasons for excitement as it is. But there was only one thing to worry about, Mildred. Nancy had persuaded Sandra to accept the situation, repeated that Mildred was a good girl and Roy was lucky to have her. But Sandra didn't want to listen to her. She regretted not preventing the wedding, she decided to be wise, she was afraid of spoiling her relationship with her son. And now what? All that remains is to wait until Mildred gets pregnant and then it's all gone. Roy will be with her forever, and nothing can be done. Even if they divorce, alimony, responsibility, a burden from the past that will haunt him for the rest of his life, or rather, the next 18 years. Sandra began to put her plan into action. 
she began inviting friends who had daughters Roy's age to visit. She invited them when Roy was at home and Mildred was working or studying in her classes. Sandra had two such friends. The first, Ella, had a daughter Sophia. She was a couple of years older than Roy, but Sandra didn't see anything wrong with that. She was studying to be a psychologist, conducted some kind of training and was making good money. Educated, smart, and pretty, what more could you want? But Roy didn't like Sophia. He said he was afraid of psychologists and that he didn't understand much of what Sophia was saying. Yes, she liked to insert psychological terms into her speech. Sandra didn't understand much either, but she made sure that Sophia was very smart. But what could he do, apparently Roy did not understand what his happiness was all about. The second girl Sandra Roy introduced was Irene, the daughter of her colleague. Irene had studied to be an economist, just like Roy. Sandra counted on this to bring them closer together. Surely the young people would find subjects to talk about. She prepared for the meeting very carefully, she bought a cake, made salads. She had high hopes for Irene, one might say, she was her main bet. She was beautiful, very intelligent, and had a beautiful family. But Roy acted strangely at the table. What department did you write your degree in? Who cares and Roy lowered his eyes embarrassedly, you know, I want to forget. Because it's such an intense study there. I didn't get up from my desk while I was writing my paper, you might say, psychological trauma. I see, Irene nodded, what do you think of Frank Tozig's work? I really liked his approach. I don't. It's interesting, but nothing more than that. Sandra realized Roy didn't want to talk about professional topics. He can be understood. So much work will be given, it is also Irene who has begun to test him with her questions. We should act smarter. Men like to talk about themselves, not about the books they read. And Roy, by the way, is into sports, Sandra tried to help her son, in school he played soccer, and now he goes to the gym. Interesting, Irene nodded indifferently, by the way, Roy, have you read? Okay, I should probably go, Roy got up from the table without finishing his tea, tired, sorry, please. That's okay, Irene smiled, I should probably go too. I've come to visit for a while anyway. My mother asked me to give Sandra a book. When Roy left for his room, Irene looked at Sandra in surprise. Did I say something wrong? No, it's just that he works hard, gets tired, Sandra defended her son, don't worry, come see us again with your mother or alone. But Irene didn't come again. Sandra was angry with her son. She often called Nancy to complain about life. Can you imagine, she sits in her room all the time, Sandra told her friend, like a mouse. Maybe she's the reason Roy can't get a decent job either. And why because of her, asked Nancy, he could move back to the capital and work there. Where's he going to take her now? You'll soon blame her for all the trouble, Nancy objected. I don't like her, sighed Sandra, I look at her and it annoys me. What did he like about her? Look, maybe it's a spell, black magic? Nancy laughed. Trimmed his hair, gathered it up, and put it in a wax doll. Of course, Sandra, calm down. Get used to it, it's your son's choice and you have to respect it. I'll see what happens when your Leo brings one home, and she hung up. There you go, and her friend against her, she should be the one to understand how Sandra feels, she has a son herself after all. Does not she care who will live with her boy? And then, something happened that divided their lives. It was a normal Sunday afternoon, Roy and Mildred were going out of town with friends. Sandra was sitting at home watching some Hollywood melodrama, wondering if she should go to the supermarket for brownies. On the one hand, she had a terrible craving for sweets, and, on the other hand, she had put on enough weight over the past six months, and brownies clearly would not do her any good. She had never been able to limit herself to one. Then it all manifested on her hips and on her belly. After watching the movie, the woman decided that she had to go to the store, but only to take money for exactly one cake, and leave the credit card at home. Satisfied with her idea, Sandra went to get ready. Suddenly her phone rang, she saw Roy's number. 
Yes, how are you? Mom, don't freak out, he said quietly, we had an accident. Are you hurt? Are you in the hospital? Sandra slumped to the floor on the wall. God of Roy, her beloved son, what's wrong with him? Could it be something serious? Mom, I'm fine, Roy assured her, just a couple of abrasions, but Mildred is bad. What about her? asked Sandra, is she alive? Alive, said Roy, in a strange, mechanical voice, the doctor said she probably has a broken spine. Jesus, son, I'm on my way. Tell me where you are. Roy dictated the address of the hospital, Sandra quickly got dressed and called a cab. She was shaking like she was freezing, even though it was a warm September day. What about Roy? Until she saw him alive and well, she would not rest. Her son was waiting for Sandra in the emergency room. Sandra cried immediately when she saw a white bandage on her son's head. Son, what's wrong with you? Tell me the truth. Mom, I told you it's an abrasion, Roy hugged his mother and held her close to him, I didn't even have to stitch it up. But Mildred. She was thrown from the car, and I told her to buckle up, and she forgot. Roy's voice trembled. Sandra was unbearably sorry to see it with his own eyes. Now this trauma would torment him for the rest of his life, let's go home, you need to rest. Mom, what about Mildred, Roy wondered, the doctor said he'd be out soon to tell me what's wrong with her. They took her away for some tests. Okay, let's sit down, they sat down next to the other patients waiting to be admitted. Sandra was quickly calming down. She was getting uncomfortable, something must really be wrong with her. She had almost forgotten about Mildred. All she cared about was what happened to her son. But then, who could blame her for that? The doctor showed up almost an hour later. Sandra and Roy managed to drink two cups of coffee from the machine in the waiting room. Sandra tried to distract her son, but he answered in one word either yes or no. She squeezed his hand and prayed to all the gods that Mildred would be all right. The doctor called them into a small room in the examination area. Well, what can I say, he began, things aren't looking good for you. What's wrong with her, whispered Roy. Fracture of the spine, thoracic, the doctor began to list, fracture of the radius, closed head injury, fracture of four ribs, but the most important thing, of course, is the spine. But you'll get her through surgery, Sandra asked, and she'll be fine. I've seen, there are these special things, they put them in the vertebrae. I'm sorry, medicine is not omnipotent. I do not want to give you false optimism, the doctor lowered her eyes, we will do the surgery, we have very good specialists. I just can't guarantee that the girl will walk again. What, she'll be paralyzed, exclaimed Roy. Probably, the doctor nodded briefly, of course, things happen, rehabilitators work miracles, and we still don't know enough about the body's capabilities. But the possibility that Mildred will be confined to a wheelchair for life is, alas, very high. What can we do, Sandra looked pitifully at the doctor, is there anything we can do to help? Money or medicine, for instance? Keep the money, you'll need it, for now, just wait to see what happens, the doctor got up and shook Roy's hand, you'd better go home. Come here tomorrow, something will be more or less clear in the morning. They left the hospital. It was already dark. Sandra didn't know what to say to her son, and Roy seemed to drift away. He moved his legs automatically, looking straight ahead of him like a robot. Son, it's going to be okay, Sandra gently took him by the elbow, you heard the doctors are good, they're going to do the surgery on her. We don't know how it will be, Roy replied, maybe she'll be paralyzed, disabled. We don't know that yet, Sandra said, but somehow she was sure if the prognosis was good, the doctor would hardly keep it from them. It looked like Mildred was really going to be disabled, and there was nothing they could do about it. At home Sandra called Nancy. She promised to find doctors she knew at the hospital where Mildred ended up. I'll talk to them myself, Nancy offered, and they'll tell me the truth. It's the relatives who may not be told something. All right, I look forward to your call. A friend called back half an hour later. Yeah. Things aren't looking good for you, she said in a sad voice, her fracture is bad. 
Her ribs, her arm are all little things really, but her spine. Her spinal cord is damaged. So there's a good chance that she'll get up. 20% that she'll walk, and 80% that she'll have to. Have to what? Spend her whole life in a wheelchair. Poor Roy, Sandra replied, and how will he do now? Ride her around in a wheelchair? Mother, you are out of your mind. Roy poor, and Mildred? Think of the girl, she has no one but Roy and you. And now this. Roy is a healthy man, and you forget that there are other people besides Roy. Don't yell at me, Sandra squeezed the tube as if trying to hurt Nancy, he's my only son. And she's nobody. Okay, I'll think you're just saying that from stress, Nancy said quietly, I'll keep you posted, girlfriend. And stop treating Mildred like that, she hasn't done anything wrong to you. What does this Nancy allow herself? Scolds her for adoring her son. He could have died himself, and Mildred is a nobody, some girl lucky enough to jump into her boy's bed and stay there for a long time. And now she will also be a misfortune to their family. Who's going to take care of her? Roy or Sandra? Who would pay for her rehabilitation, buy her medicine, her wheelchair? Sandra burst into tears as she stood in the middle of her own bedroom. She felt at once that this Mildred would be nothing but trouble. Her motherly heart sensed the trouble to come, and so it was. The next day she and Roy went to the hospital. Will she walk? Sandra asked hopefully. I don't know yet, the doctor replied, I hope, she will. Now all we can do is to wait. Mildred spent a month and a half in the hospital. Alternately with Roy, Sandra visited Mildred, brought apples, oranges, chicken broth. Mildred did not get out of bed and hardly spoke. Doctors gave a bleak prognosis. The likelihood that Mildred would walk was tending towards zero. Most likely she would be in a wheelchair. Sandra was terrified. She didn't know what to do next and felt sorry for her son. How will he be with his invalid wife now? He is so young, his life is just beginning, and already such grief. She periodically hinted to her son about divorce. She would no longer have children, she would have to take care of her for the rest of her life. Should we continue to be together with her? Of course she felt sorry for the girl, but she should feel much sorrier for herself. Roy was angry with mom, saying that she had no heart. But Sandra felt that he believed she was right. It was as if he was extinguished, walking heavily, like an old man. Roy spoke little, slept little, and at night she saw light streaming in from under the door in his room. What Roy was doing, she didn't know, maybe just lying there staring at the ceiling in the light of a desk lamp or leafing through his social media feed, trying to distract himself from his pain. The day of discharge came. Sandra ordered a special cab equipped to carry the stroller. She got a stroller from Nancy somewhere, an old one, not very comfortable, but adequate for the first time. Sandra found out how much more modern models cost and was horrified. And if Mildred stayed with them, she would have to re-equip the apartment so that she could go into the bathroom and kitchen on her own. The thought made Sandra want to cry. Mildred acted strangely, hiding her eyes, as if ashamed of making others uncomfortable. She was constantly apologizing. Roy was always there for her. He touched her pillow, patted her on the head, kissed her on the cheek. Sandra was irritated by his behavior. And he, too, was to blame for what had happened. He could have reminded Mildred to buckle up. He liked to drive fast. As soon as he bought the car, tickets came for speeding. Sandra told him he couldn't do that, he had to be careful. No one was insured. And Roy just laughed. And here's the result. It's a good thing he wasn't hurt himself. At home Roy put the silent Mildred down on the bed. She said she wanted to rest and fell asleep. Roy and Sandra went into the kitchen to rest and have tea. Roy, what's next, Sandra asked him quietly, in a half voice. We'll live, try to rehabilitate her. The doctor said there's a chance. Roy, if you weren't a child, the chances are slim. It's like winning the lottery of a million, not impossible, but very, very unlikely. 
So what do you suggest? What do we do now? Roy, I don't know, Sandra shrugged her shoulders confusedly, there are different centers specifically for the disabled, there are all the conditions for them, doctors, food. Honey, maybe what I'm telling you now seems cynical, but it's for your own good and for hers, of course. Why is that? Roy, don't act like a child. Okay? Mildred won't get up, I have no intention of being a caregiver. You don't want to be at her bedside all your life either, and will pay for a nursing home somehow, since Mildred happens to have no one but us. I'm not suggesting we throw her out on the street, son. Mom, I don't want to hear it, Roy slammed his fist on the table, Sandra reflexively recoiled from her son. She had never seen him like this before. Suit yourself, she pulled herself together and looked Roy calmly in the eye, but in six months, son, you'll talk differently. You'll agree with me, I'm sure. If you want to play nice so much, play nice. She's my wife, and I'm not putting her in any home for the handicapped. Never. Sandra realized, you just have to give the guy time. He would get tired of Mildred, understand what his mother was telling him. Of course, she herself had instilled in him all those proverbial, eternal, values of caring for one's neighbor, of not abandoning the weak to their fate. But this is a completely different situation. You can't sacrifice yourself. Mildred won't get up, the doctors made that quite clear to her. She asked many times if there was a chance. And they said something indefinite, lowering their eyes in response. It is clear that Mildred will remain an invalid. She will not walk, and Roy's life has just begun. Sandra herself doesn't feel old yet either, she has her own business. She is less than 50 years old, she may well meet someone. After all, she has every right to live at her own pleasure now that her son has grown up, and the business brings a steady income. Otherwise, it turns out that all her life she has been climbing to the top of the mountain, but not to take a break at the top, but to pick up a new, heavy rock and climb on with it. Or, more accurately, just to walk with that stone on her shoulders in a circle. After all, Mildred's care is a work in progress that will not deliver. It won't get up, it's a futile effort, and the sooner Roy realizes that, the better for him. For the first month Roy never left Mildred alone, preparing dietary meals for her when he was home, carrying plates to the bedroom on a small tray, talking to her at length, helping her exercise. Sandra watched this with great skepticism. Of course, she participated in Mildred's care, too, but she didn't enjoy doing it, so Sandra tried to spend more time at work. Fortunately, Mildred could be left alone, so no caregiver was needed. It was enough to leave water, wet wipes, cookies, and a couple of apples on the bedside table. After a month, Roy began to get tired. Sandra sensed this and realized that a little longer and her son would finally make the right choice. He began asking his mother more and more often to feed Mildred or to help her do her gymnastics. This made Mildred uncomfortable, not physically, of course, but mentally. She kept apologizing, wouldn't make eye contact. It was as if she even shrank into a lump when Sandra entered her room. Sandra paid no attention to this. Awkward, of course, in front of the girl, but what could she do? Sandra was not ready to turn her apartment into a charity center. If Mildred is smart enough, she'll realize that she doesn't belong here, and she'll ask to go somewhere where she won't be in anyone's way. If she loves Roy, she will leave him alone. Of this Sandra was firmly convinced. One night at dinner, Roy suddenly said. Mom, I have to go away. For how long, Sandra asked frustratedly, it will be hard without you, nothing, of course, I can manage for a couple of days. But still. Not a couple of days, replied Roy calmly, maybe a month or a little longer. What, exclaimed Sandra. For work, Roy smiled artificially, you need the money. You know how it is. I found out the other day how much it costs to send Mildred to a good clinic for rehab. And I don't have a degree from a metropolitan university. Sandra laughed. Mom, I'm not kidding, Roy's gaze grew even more piercing, I really don't have any college degree. Son, what are you doing? Sandra felt a lump in her throat, which for some reason terribly interfered with her breathing. 
Mom, I should have told you sooner, Roy continued, I was too hard to study, so I dropped out of university. Roy, what are you talking about? I've seen your diploma, Sandra heard her voice as if from outside. How unpleasant it was. Shrill, harsh, like an old cat whose tail has been accidentally stepped on. Look, Mom, don't worry about it. And without diplomas people live, Roy shrugged, yes, I went to the first course, studied for six months and realized that I just can't. You had to study everything from morning till night. I thought I was going to go crazy from it. So? Everyone was studying, and you could, Sandra whispered, it was for your future, for you. I couldn't, Roy looked away, I couldn't, no way. Those guys I went to school with, they all had cars, brand name clothes, their parents gave them a lot of money. I had nothing. How nothing, wondered Sandra, I sent you a lot of money. Is that a lot for the capital, Roy smiled, they dressed in brands and I dressed in simple stores. They drove their cars to school, and I took the subway. Well, I couldn't stand it. Mom, I just took my papers. So what, Sandra couldn't believe her own ears, you've lived there for five years. Yes, Mom, thank you. I did not spend all the money you sent me, you know, I even had enough for the wedding. So what have you been up to? Sandra turned to shouting, she could no longer contain her emotions. I worked, learned to drive, got my driver's license. I work as a driver. Actually, as a driver, that's what I'm going on this business trip. I saw your diploma, Roy, continued to shout Sandra, you showed a red diploma. Mom, I bought my diploma in the underpass, Roy rolled his eyes, you can find anything there, you want an economist, you want a lawyer, you want a surgeon. You lied to me, Sandra covered her eyes and tears came to her cheeks, and I believed it, I thought I was doing it all for you. Roy jumped up from his chair and walked over to his mother, he put his arm around her shoulders, and she didn't resist, she just didn't have the strength. Mom, I'm sorry, he whispered, don't you think I was worried about letting you down like that? After all, I felt bad, too, especially at first. And then I decided that I was going to make money as a driver. The money was good. Now I'm back with you, isn't that bad, huh? Don't you love me anyway, with or without a college degree? I do, son, Sandra nodded, only I don't understand why all this, why this? I would have understood you, I would have understood everything if you had told me right away. Sandra did not sleep all night. She thought about Roy, about what he had done. Yes, she should have thought of that, sending him to the capital. Of course, he would be surrounded by well-dressed guys who were not used to denying themselves anything, and he was just out of high school then. Naturally, he wasn't ready for that, so it was probably her fault, too. But she was still angry at her son, he was cheating on her. Was it possible to forgive for such a thing? Sandra asked herself that over and over again. But she knew perfectly well that she would forgive Roy, she had already forgiven him. A couple of days later, he left, promising that he would try to come back sooner. It was Saturday, and Sandra decided not to go to the salon, leaving it to the receptionist. In the morning, while helping Mildred change, she asked, did you know he didn't have an economics degree? I knew, Mildred said in a quiet voice, slipping her hand into the sleeve of her t-shirt, excuse him, he was really afraid to tell you. He was afraid, Sandra muttered, I know. What else don't I know? You'd better tell me at once what other secrets you had there. None, Mildred looked at her mother-in-law in surprise, really. All right, if that's the case. In the evening Sandra went out for coffee with Nancy. At first she didn't want to tell her about Sack's deception, but she told her anyway, she just couldn't keep it to herself. Yeah, Nancy stretched out as she listened to her friend's story, and Roy is good. You know, Sandra, you shouldn't have spoiled him so much. That's the result. Did I spoil him, wondered Sandra. Of course, you did, Nancy laughed, you bought everything he asked for, cars, construction sets. I told you, he'll play for three days and then quit, he needs something new. But that's normal, Sandra shrugged, everybody did that. Uh. 
Huh, and what was it like in school? Didn't you ask teachers for grades? He knew perfectly well that he could take it easy, his mother would take care of all the problems, Nancy continued. As if you weren't helping your son, Sandra wanted to punch Nancy in the laughing face, and you're the family psychology expert. I did, Nancy nodded, but I did. I didn't do anything for him, and you were so afraid Roy would get upset. That's why he grew up so unfit. And when I had to make an effort, he gave up. I'm sorry I'm telling you all this so directly. I know how unpleasant it is to hear that about your child, but I don't want to be silent anymore, Sandra, I'm telling it like it is. Maybe you're right, Sandra nodded, of course she thought Nancy was wrong, but she didn't want to discuss the subject, I wonder what to do with Mildred next. She's doing some exercises, but nothing works, she's just lying there. She is trying, though. She is trying to lift some dumbbells, like the doctor said, but she is not getting any results. We have to wait, Nancy shrugged, wait and keep practicing. By the way, here's a book my Leo passed on, it's a study on spinal trauma. I mean, about spinal injuries, exercises are written. He highly recommended it. Yes, yes, thank you, Sandra slipped the book into her bag, eh, this is all so bad timing. Mildred with her trauma, now Roy told me all this. I don't know, I don't know how to go on. Well, you can't change anything now, Nancy remarked philosophically, so wait and see. A week of Roy's absence passed. Sandra was terribly tired, there was a lot of work at the salon, and at home she had to help Mildred. Roy called her a couple of times to tell her that everything was okay, and he would be home soon. True, he didn't give a specific time frame. One morning when Sandra arrived at work, Chloe, the receptionist, approached her. Sandra, something's wrong. What else is wrong, frightened Sandra, is the hair dye running out again, and I wasn't warned? No, not the hair dye. Here, look, I thought I'd check the reviews. Sandra took her smartphone in her hands. A lot of reviews about her salon had appeared in recent days, and almost all of them were negative. The salon has become horrible, I used to like everything, but now it's on a level like a barbershop and the prices are huge. Or here's another review. They dyed me there. I asked for blonde, and got a green color. The masters here are horrible. What is this? Uh, Chloe's voice trembled, everyone was happy, where did this come from? Probably the competitors, Sandra said, not taking her eyes off her smartphone screen. The next review that caught her eye was about a specialist who, instead of trimming the tips, had cut off almost 15 centimeters. What to do, asked Chloe, it's never happened before, has it? I'll figure it out, Sandra forced out a smile, it was inappropriate for the employees to see the boss worried, just someone wants us to have fewer clients, poach them. But regular customers will not believe this kind of feedback. Chloe, calm down. And we have plenty of new customers, you know, no place to sign up, we have to record a week in advance, and even for two. So, do not worry. Chloe smiled nervously. You're right, of course, maybe we can get someone to have these reviews removed, most importantly, no signatures. At least find out who it is, I'm worried. Yes, it's unlikely it's our customers, confidently stated Sandra, hired some person for 15 rubles, so she made it up. Don't be nervous, we work as usual. Sandra tried to pretend that she did not care in the slightest about the negative reviews, but the owner of the salon settled anxiety in her soul. Every day Sandra checked the review site herself and found more and more criticism of her salon. They said the shampoo was bad, the dye had expired, the craftsmen were horrible, the results were so bad that she couldn't leave her house. Sandra hoped that her competitors sooner or later get tired of writing negative reviews, but it did not happen. Only regulars came, but they also sometimes asked what happened, why their favorite salon, which always had a 5-star rating, lost as much as 2 stars. Sandra diligently moved the conversation to another topic. And what could she say? Blaming everything on the competitors would sound like an excuse, and Sandra knew firmly that you can't do that, never under any circumstances. It would only make things worse. She had to stand up proudly for what was right and ignore the hissing snakes behind her. 
she hoped the problem would resolve itself, but it only got worse. One day Sandra arrived at work a little later than usual, delayed by changing Mildred's clothes. Behind the receptionist's desk sat a tearful Chloe. What's wrong, frightened Sandra, Chloe, are you in trouble? A customer got into a scandal. She was screaming and calling me names. First time that's happened. What kind of client? A regular one, asked Sandra. No, the first time she came, Catherine I think, right, I have it written down. What didn't she like? Ella cut her hair, she's sitting in the break room crying. This customer called me a cow, too. Can you believe I'm fat? Okay, you're not fat, Sandra said sternly, calm down, go have a coffee, I'll sit for you. Just let me talk to Ella first. Ella was sitting on the couch in the lounge. From the look of her she could tell that the girl had recently been crying. Ella's eyes were red, her face puffy, her lips trembling. What was wrong with her? Ella she considered one of the best masters in the salon. Clients simply adored her, she really knew how to make a gorgeous haircut out of nothing. Overburned, badly cut or lack of density hair in her hands was transformed into stylish hairstyles. Sandra sat down next to the master. Ella, what happened, tell me. She asked that I trim the ends and volumize the back of my head there was nothing complicated there, just a haircut to update. I did everything as she asked, asking if she liked it. Finished it, and she started screaming. Why, what didn't you like, Sandra stroked the girl on the shoulder. I don't know, Ella lowered her head, but she yelled loud. Blamed me for making the back of her head short, which is what she was asking for. I showed her pictures of the haircut so she'd know how it would be. Then she called me names, and Chloe. Sandra, you're going to fire me now, aren't you? No, I will not, sighed Sandra, let me try to call her back, I'll ask what's wrong, if anything, offer to fix it, discounts or free manicure, for example. Unpleasant, of course, but there are such clients. Maybe she did not want to pay, but they do not come to us. They prefer a simpler place. But that's what happened. Really? Ella smiled, not mad. Not mad, of course, Ella held out her hand to Ella, let's go wash up and get to work. You have a client booked in 20 minutes. The day passed quietly, but Sandra returned her thoughts to the unhappy client. Something has been going wrong lately, and it all started with the return of Roy. First that ridiculous wedding, then the car accident, now it was as if someone had jinxed their salon. Sandra consoled herself with the fact that a black streak is always followed by a bright one. True, she had no idea what that light streak would bring. Maybe Nancy was right? She often said that to make someone good, first you have to make him bad, and then return everything as it was. That's why Sandra saw her happiness in the following way, Roy is near, the salon brings a good income, and Mildred is somewhere far away from them. No, she didn't wish her any harm, she just didn't want her to live in their apartment. Sandra was even ready to pay for the treatment or maintenance of Mildred in some boarding house, just do not let the mistress of the apartment to see her. A couple of days after the unpleasant incident at the salon Sandra called Roy, Mom, it's okay, but I'm going to be a while. For how long, chilled Sandra, she was getting pretty tired of taking care of Mildred. A couple of months, Roy replied nonchalantly, the pay here is good, I'll come and get the money. Sandra went into a rage, they pay him well. He's gone and rested, left all his duties to his mother. It had already happened that way. When Roy was little, he suddenly wanted a puppy. Roy was about 10 years old, and he cried and talked about dogs all the time. Sandra worked all day. She just didn't have time to take care of this puppy, but she gave in. They found an ad for a puppy for sale, bought it, named the dog Molly. It was a little girl, small, big-eared, with short hair and smart, brown eyes. For a while Roy got up at 6 a.m. to take Molly for a walk, went out with her in the evening, fed her, brushed her hair, and then he got tired of it all. Sandra happens to know that her son doesn't walk the poor dog. He just wipes up puddles with a rag and that's it. She had to take the walks herself. Before work, in any weather, the woman would go outside and walk the dog around the house. 
The same thing was repeated in the evening. Sandra worked on her feet, so her evening walks were particularly difficult. Molly lived with them for eight years, and then Sandra had a hard time with her. She couldn't be bothered to go for walks, so the woman decided to find a new home for the dog. This was not easy for me. She had grown very attached to Molly and did not want to give her to strangers, which made the task much more difficult. In the end, Nancy took the animal. Her son, Leo, just loved animals, so the fate of Molly turned out quite well. But Sandra still hated remembering it. She felt she had betrayed the dog. And Roy didn't care. It turns out that history is repeating itself, only on a different scale. Now it is no longer the dog that depends on Sandra, but the man. The news that Roy was not coming seemed to be taken calmly by Mildred. It was only at night that Sandra awoke to her silent crying. She felt sorry for Mildred. Poor girl. It must be hard to be a burden especially to someone who clearly had no feelings for her. Sandra felt ashamed. She promised herself that tomorrow she would certainly try something to please Mildred. Maybe buy her some cakes or, for example, ice cream. But the next day Sandra never bought anything for Mildred. When she arrived at the salon there was disgusting news waiting for her. Chloe reported that the customer who yelled at Ella shot a video and posted it on the internet. In the video she told about how disgusting the service was in the salon. Of course, she had edited the video a little, so it looked like Ella was yelling at her client, proving her wrong. That's the way it is, the girl smiled at Sandra from the screen, it's not always what's gold that glitters. And I won't go to that salon again, and I advise you to do the same. How do you like it, said Chloe, and journalists have joined her. Three articles have been published since morning and all about the disgusting service. Sandra, what is it? And do not even read the comments. Sandra closed her eyes, took a deep breath, and then exhaled. You have to try to ignore all of this. Stuff happens in life. We keep working like before, those nasty articles will all soon be forgotten, nothing changes for us. We work. But Sandra was wrong. The same day, the appointment was cancelled by three regular clients. Back home, Sandra spent the day trying to control herself, burst into tears right in the hallway. What's wrong, came her quiet voice from Mildred's room, something bad? Nothing, I'm fine. Is something wrong with Roy, asked Mildred anxiously. I'm fine, Sandra answered uneasily. She urgently needed to speak out. She walked into Mildred's room, the latter sitting in bed anxiously looking at her mother-in-law. Mildred, someone wants to make trouble for our salon. The reviews are bad. Now this stupid commercial has come out. Never happened, you know? Never at all. I've seen it, Mildred replied, who do you think it could be? I'm thinking competitors work, the Hazel Salon, for instance. There's not much else in town to compete with you. Maybe, Sandra sank down on the bed, but Hazel and I are on good terms, I don't think she'd go for that. Who else would? Mildred frowned. Sandra realized she was genuinely worried about her, her usually pale cheeks flushed, her hands clenched into fists. You have a beautiful place, I still remember how great it was there. Such service, such craftsmen. So what do we do now, Sandra asked sadly, who do we complain to? Should I go to the police? Ridiculous, Sandra lowered her head. Maybe we should wait a little while. It will be forgotten. I don't think so, they've already started cancelling the record, can you imagine? What will happen next, Sandra pressed her palm to her flaming forehead, worked so hard, tried so hard on this image. I know how demanding customers are now. Often picky. We've always had the best. Yeah, it's a terrible situation, Mildred stretched out, think, who could you be bothering? Maybe one of the new salons is trying to get rid of you? Sandra wondered. There's a chain salon that opened recently, they work on a stream, and the prices are different there, too. So obviously not our competition. Or it's Lawrence, they're all trying to get to the next level. But this has been going on for so many years, masters don't go to them. 
They talked at length about salons, about competition, about what to do to get rid of negative reviews. Gradually, the conversation turned to more mundane topics. Mildred, I know so little about you, Sandra said, looking at her sister-in-law, somehow we haven't communicated at all. It's nothing interesting, laughed Mildred, I'm ordinary, I don't even know why Roy chose me. He's really wonderful, isn't he? And she does genuinely love him, thought Sandra, so tell me about yourself. I know your mother raised you. Yes, mom, Mildred lowered her eyes and began to draw invisible circles on the blanket with her index finger, I never knew dad. He left us before I was born. At least, that's what my mother told me. So she raised me on her own, worked three jobs to make sure I had everything. But I still didn't have enough. I started working when I was 14, handing out flyers on the street, putting up ads. Terrible, of course, Mildred laughed, you can imagine, that's the kind of worker I am. And I've always dreamt of being a hairdresser. When I was a kid I cut all my doll's hair and braided braids for others. Once I cut my classmates' bangs, her mother came to us to scold her. Anyway, I grew up and went to school. And then my mom was gone. And what made her go away? Sandra asked softly. Mildred sighed. Her heart, she had a heart attack. Well, her health wasn't great, she'd been drinking the last few years. Probably from loneliness, felt sorry for her. No, don't get any ideas, she wasn't violent. On the contrary, she either fell asleep right away, or she started feeling sorry for me, that I was growing up without a father, that my mother was like that. But why pity me? I loved her very much, I thought I was going crazy when she was gone. And then I got a job and met Roy. And then there was the accident that made you bedridden, Sandra finished mentally. She felt unbearably sorry for Mildred. Poor girl. Her joy is Roy. She is talented, though. And Sandra kicked her out, offended that she had seduced her son. That's all right, then you'll come back to us and work again, Sandra stroked Mildred on the head and said, you'll be all right. If I get up, Mildred said quietly, I understand everything. I was thinking, it's hard for you, there are all kinds of houses where people like me live, maybe? No. You'll stay with us until you get back on your feet. Understand? And then you'll go to any home you want. But I don't want to be a burden to you, sighed Mildred, don't you think I understand that you don't like all this? Here's Roy gone. I like it all, Sandra smiled, or else I'd be sitting alone, and you're still a good person to talk to. Okay, let me feed you, and then we'll exercise. Too bad I can't get your stroller out, so we could take a walk in the alley. Before Roy left, she would sometimes walk outside. He would take her stroller out and roll it around the house. Sandra couldn't handle that task. Then the two of them drank tea together and talked. Mildred showed Sandra her drawings, haircuts, and makeup she planned to do someday. Just sketches of what Mildred saw around her. You're very talented, Sandra admired, I had no idea you drew like that. In the evening, before going to bed, Sandra suddenly felt relieved. Strange, nothing has changed, Mildred is still not getting up, there are problems with the salon, Roy is away, and it is as if a light has come on in her soul, still barely noticeable, dim, but it seems to be getting a little brighter with each passing moment. The next days were difficult for Sandra. More and more comments, usually negative, appeared under the video in which the client complained about the salon. Roy called rarely and hardly spoke to his mother, everything is fine, I work, I eat well, that's all the conversation. But Sandra got Mildred. She berated herself for treating the girl so badly initially. She began to like Mildred for her naivety, her kindness, her sincerity, her willingness to support her in a difficult situation, even though she herself was in a position that even her enemy would not wish. Sandra told Nancy. Well, there, I told you that discern in a girl good traits. By the way, I was just telling Leo about this whole situation. He says he can help and take her out for a walk, and he knows the exercises. Is that convenient? Sandra confused. It makes him happy. 
Just as long as Roy doesn't get mad, Sandra thought, after all, she's his wife, and here will be a stranger's man. Well, if he's that jealous, that's his problem. He's free on Saturday, he can stop by your place. On Saturday, Leo arrived at Sandra's as promised. Mildred was shy of him and hardly spoke to him, answering his questions briefly, but she did her exercises diligently. You should hang a bar here, said Leo, so you can do pull-ups. And also, there's an exercise machine, it's attached to the back of the bed, I'll get it. Then the three of them took a walk in the park. Mildred enjoyed breathing in the fresh air and, like a child, delighted in spotting a funny sparrow, a cat, or a funny child stomping in a puddle in rubber boots. In the evening, after putting Mildred to bed, Sandra was also getting ready for bed. Still, you have to admit that Nancy has raised a wonderful son. He is passionate about what he does, you can tell. He promised to make Mildred a bar at their house to develop her arms, he brought her some rubber balls, and even a reflexology mat. Sandra didn't know there was such a thing. I wish it would help. She realized that she would like to take a walk with Mildred alone so she could walk on her own feet instead of riding in a stroller. Sandra chuckled, she must be getting old and sentimental. Suddenly the phone rang. Roy, it had not rung in a long time, Sandra put the phone to her ear. Hi, I'll be there the day after tomorrow, but not for long. How nice, smiled Sandra, I missed you so much, and Mildred will be glad. Don't tell Mildred, Roy said fearfully, I don't want her to know. Do you want to surprise her, don't you, asked Sandra. No, I don't. It's just that I'm literally staying for one day, I don't want to worry her. I'll crash at the hostel and then go back. Let's meet up, okay? Sure, Sandra shrugged her shoulders in surprise, I just don't understand why you would do that. She misses you. Mom, that's the way it has to be. Come on, the day after tomorrow, I'll meet you after work, okay? Okay, see you soon, Sandra put the phone down on the nightstand. And what was Roy thinking, why all the secrecy? Should we tell Mildred about his visit after all? Probably not, though, he was right. She didn't need to be disturbed, not for long anyway. A month, a month and a half at most, and Roy would be back for good. Sandra was looking forward to meeting her son. Seeing him, she rushed to meet him almost at a run. Her son hugged his mother for a few seconds and then immediately pulled away. Hello, son, Sandra looked fondly at her son, how I missed you. You've been gone a long time, of course, but nothing, Mildred is all right, he's studying a lot, he wants to go so much, you can't imagine. Mother, let's go to the cafe and talk, Roy answered her seriously. His tone did not please Sandra, as if he wanted to tell her something important, but did not dare. At the cafe they settled down at a table and ordered a cup of tea. Mom, I just don't even know where to start, Roy began stirring the tea, tapping his spoon on the fine china. Sandra wanted to make a remark. She had been terribly annoyed by this manner of his since childhood, but she remained silent. Is something wrong, she asked, I'm worried. There are two pieces of news, good news and bad news. Which one should I start with, I he smiled his most charming smile. Suit yourself, she replied. The bad news is that I'll probably move, I've been offered a great job and the pay will be great. Of course it's going to be hard for you, I understand, but I've made up my mind. And the good, I met a woman, a beautiful woman. We already live together, Roy finally stopped stirring his tea and looked out the window, I understand everything, but I'm happy with her, I hope you can understand me. What kind of woman, asked Sandra frightened. A good one, Roy still avoided looking his mother in the eye, she works in a club, a bartender, that's where we met. I don't have my own apartment, I live with her now. I love her, I don't even know what to add. Ah. Mildred, Sandra pushed his cup of tea away from him, no longer thirsty, what will happen to her? Mom, what can I do? I only have to live with her because I have to. I was wrong, you were right. Are you satisfied, mom? Mildred is not the woman I want, I do love Alice. Think about it, Sandra asked, take your time, maybe it's just that, a crush. 
After all, Mildred is in this position and it doesn't look good somehow. I don't want to lie you, mother, said Roy proudly, I love another woman, and I will not deceive Mildred. There's one more thing. Alice is pregnant, we're going to have a baby. So what should I do? Leave her for Mildred? Leave her alone, with a baby in my arms? I can't do that. She felt ashamed. This is her son, this man, who doesn't know what he's doing. He is devoid of responsibility, unable to plan beyond one step. First Mildred, now Alice, and then what? Mother, this is my life. I'll send money for Mildred, don't worry, you decide what to do with it, Roy said, I don't like it either, really, but I don't know how to do otherwise. Do what you want. You've already made up your mind. They talked some more about work, about Sandra's problems with her salon, and parted like strangers to each other. In the evening Sandra dropped in on Mildred. So how are you doing, asked Mildred, what about work? Have you found the one who's trying to hurt you yet? No, I haven't. Everything will be fine, tomorrow Leo will come, you will study with him. Mildred suddenly blushed. You know, it's kind of embarrassing, him wasting his time on me. After all, a good man, and I have nothing to thank him for. Sandra grinned. Don't worry, it's a pleasure to help him. He's a great doctor, and so are his parents. He practically grew up in a hospital, by the way, so, his mom says that for him to study with you is the best way to spend his time on his day off. Otherwise he doesn't know what to do with himself. Mildred laughed. You can tell he loves his work. Passionate like that, by the way, didn't Roy tell you when he was coming? I've missed him, and he doesn't talk to me much. He's got a lot on his plate. Sandra swallowed nervously. Well, what to tell her? She'd have to lie and convince herself it was a lie to save her life. Soon, I think, you rest and study more. Can you imagine how happy he'll be if he comes and you're already walking yourself? Yes, it would be great, Mildred smiled dreamily, I miss that feeling so much, feeling my legs, walking, running. I used to love dancing so much, I dream of dancing a little. Leo said he'd bring some special walkers, maybe I could do it. Good night, Sandra said with difficulty, she was afraid she was about to cry. Poor girl, too much has been taken from her by fate. Mildred nodded. Her hair glistened beautifully from the wall lamp, by the light of which she read in the evenings. Sandra realized for the first time that her sister-in-law was beautiful. And why had she seemed like an unsightly mouse before? Before going to bed, Sandra thought of her son. And cried into her pillow. What had she done wrong? Why had he become like this? She didn't know, but she was sure that she had to get Mildred back on his feet. The days flew by one after another, lessons with Mildred, walks, work. Sandra tried to keep her mind off Roy. He called less and less frequently, probably just wanted to start a new life, and the old one was getting in his way. A half-paralyzed wife was not the best dowry. One night Sandra was playing chess with Mildred. Leo had brought the chess. He had taught Mildred the basic rules, and now she was practicing with her mother-in-law. Both were not very good at it. Sandra had last played when she was in high school, and Mildred kept forgetting how the pieces went. I guess I'm too stupid, Mildred sighed, Leo said you just have to get a feel for it, understand the meaning of the game, then everything will go by itself. But I can't make sense of it. Sandra grinned. Leo just doesn't know how to woo a girl. She had long noticed that Mildred liked the young doctor, but he certainly couldn't afford anything extra. Knowing that Mildred is married, he tries to please her as best he can. Mildred does not notice this, of course. Sandra has seen the way Leo looks at Mildred, the way he rejoices in her every success. If he falls in love with her for real, it will only complicate things. You'll learn, Mildred, you'll definitely learn, Sandra tried to encourage her sister-in-law, you've only been playing for the first day, and you already want to be good at it. It doesn't work that way. I guess. Well, or I'm just really stupid, who knows? Suddenly the doorbell rang. Sandra looked at the wall clock. 
It was almost 9 p.m., who would want to break in, at this hour, or maybe the neighbor needed salt, or maybe someone just answered the wrong door. Who is it, who grumbled Sandra, if they offer to buy a wonderful vacuum cleaner again, I won't be able to control my emotions anymore, honestly. She stepped out into the hallway. Who's there? Sandra? Does Mildred live here, a pleasant male voice inquired. I'm Sandra, and why do you, excuse me, Mildred? Sandra frowned. She didn't understand what was going on. Just in case, she pulled out the gas can be hanging from the hook of her bag. I don't even know where to start, the strange man said, I need to talk to you. A lot. I had a hard time finding you, you have no idea. First tell me why you were looking for us. Open up please, it's embarrassing to talk through the door, the man asked. First tell me who you are and what you want? And I'll think about whether or not to open the door for you. You see, I'm Mildred's father. Mildred doesn't have a father, Sandra hissed, you can tell those tales elsewhere. Everyone has a father, the man objected, or do you think your daughter-in-law was born by immaculate conception? Sandra, all my life I thought I had no daughter, and I recently learned of her existence. I want to see her, I know what happened to her, I can help her. Get out of here, Sandra squeezed the can tighter, Mildred doesn't have a father, and if she did, she would know about it. And if you've ignored her existence for years, she doesn't need you now either. I understand that I find it hard to believe, the man said quietly, let me put it this way, I'll leave a letter for you in the mailbox, read it and decide if you should talk to me. Leave whatever you want, I'm not interested, Sandra said. Sandra, shall we try? Read these letters and decide for yourself whether to call me or not. Better yet, give the letters to Mildred, please. I'll find a way to meet her anyway. All right, write anything, Sandra replied. Done, said the man, and thank you. For what, wondered Sandra. For being so protective of her. From the voice of the invisible interlocutor, Sandra realized that he was smiling. All the best. Sandra stood at the door for a while longer, she needed to calm down. Amazing. What kind of a daddy is he? Let him prove that he had something to do with Mildred, and then they would decide what to do next. She went back into the room. Who was there, the worried girl asked. It was the crazy salesman, started advertising their cosmetics, Sandra replied indifferently. So late, wondered Mildred, is anyone really buying? I don't know, good night, the woman went to her room. Maybe we should call the police. Who was it and why was he coming to them? Was he a crook or a madman? On the other hand, this man knows about Mildred, knows where they live, definitely the police should be called. With these thoughts Sandra fell asleep. The next day she was awakened by the phone ringing. She looked at the smartphone screen, 7 am. Who needed her so early? It was Chloe. Chloe, what happened again? Sandra's heart seemed to stop. Her back was suddenly covered in cold sweat. Could this just be a continuation of her dream? The salon burned down, Chloe cried, I got the call, I'm on my way there right away. They say there was a terrible fire and there's nothing left. Sandra sat up abruptly in bed. How did it burn? I don't know, the girl answered her in a shaky voice, I don't understand anything, they said an hour ago it caught fire and so fast. I'm on my way, Sandra answered briefly. Unable to remember herself with horror, she quickly dressed, grabbing the first jeans and sweater she could find from the closet. Sandra was angry and worried. Quickly saying, goodbye, to Mildred, she hailed a cab and drove to the parlor. The sight that opened before her was simply frightening, their salon was almost completely burnt out. The surprising thing was that the store next door had not been damaged at all. Firemen had already finished their work, but apparently there was nothing to save, what was left was an island, a box, covered with black ash from inside. Passersby crowded around. They were discussing what had happened, and scraps of phrases came to Sandra's ears. It burned fast. Nightmare. It was like being doused in gasoline. Who could have done that? 
My god, what is it? A crying Chloe ran up to Sandra, how now? Do you know anything? Asked Sandra, how did this happen? I have no idea, replied Chloe, really, no one could have set fire, we have a security system. If someone had broken in, there would have been a signal to you and the security desk. Nothing happened, you know. They say it all caught fire quickly, and by the time the fire brigade arrived there was nothing left. So what are we going to do now? I don't know, Sandra replied quietly, I don't know anything. Her main brainchild, her life's work, her salon. Now it is gone. How much effort, time and money it would take to restore it. It was scary to imagine. Yes, the salon was insured, but the insurance payments would hardly cover at least the repairs. Sandra stared silently at the remains of her salon. For some reason she did not cry, as if she had run out of tears, as if her soul had suddenly turned into a desert, dead, dried up, burned out. God must be punishing me for something, she said quietly. What if interrogated Chloe, what did you say? Nothing, Sandra closed her eyes, she just didn't have the strength to see the ashes, I want to go home, just stay home for a few days. I'm exhausted. Sandra could not rest. She spoke to the investigators who suspected arson, she spoke to all the masters. Almost all of them said that they would look for a new place. And Sandra understood them, waiting for the salon to be rebuilt and sitting without money is a questionable option. Mildred took the news of the fire very emotionally, she cried and tried to console her mother-in-law. Sandra understood that Mildred really wanted to help. But how? What could she do? She can't even stand up without help. Of course, Sandra called her son to tell him what had happened. She expected him to offer to come over. One can't help but try to support a mother in such a situation. But Roy only expressed sympathy and asked if he could send Sandra some money. I can get some, just 10,000. Alice is just pregnant, you have to spend on fruit, on doctors, on vitamins. Sandra refused her son's help, asking only when Roy intended to tell Mildred everything. He replied that soon, as soon as there was time, but not now. A few days later Sandra realized that the fridge was empty. She did not want to go to the store, it was as if she had no energy at all. But there was nothing to do, the woman got dressed and went to the nearest supermarket. On her way back, she remembered that she had not checked her mailbox for a long time. Utility receipts, advertisements, a free newspaper with advertisements, and a puffy envelope, no return address, but with the sender's name, Nick, and in small letters, Father Mildred. Sandra turned the envelope in her hands, she had even forgotten about that strange night visit. No wonder, there had been so much worrying about the salon. Should she throw it away or read it? Curiosity was stronger. Sandra sighed and put that envelope in her bag. Better to find out what was in it. At home she made soup and cooked potatoes and fed Mildred. The girl looked bad, pale, thin, with dark circles under her eyes. Is something wrong? asked Sandra anxiously. She was embarrassed that she was so caught up in her worries and had little time for Mildred, and she had no one else, after all. Tired, Mildred smiled sadly, I work out a lot, I tried to do pull-ups yesterday, I did almost a hundred times, but it's probably not enough, she nodded at the makeshift bar that Leo hung above her bed, I did it on this thing. Trying to move my legs, too. Leo told me to imagine what I could do. Sometimes it even seems to work, I don't know why it does. Mildred, don't be like that, Sandra was frightened, it's not good for you to overdo it, there has to be a limit to everything. The girl sighed so bitterly that Sandra's heart ached. I really want to get up and help you, and I do understand. You don't understand anything, it's not hard for me, Sandra began. No, I mean Roy, Mildred said quietly, I understand that he doesn't want me like this. What are you talking about, frightened Sandra, he's just working, he'll be here soon. Don't, Mildred clenched her fists, it only makes it worse. I mean, I get it, he's probably already got someone. And I want him to be happy, apparently not with me. And I just want to get back on my feet and stay out of your way. 
Okay, Mildred, Sandra sat down on the edge of the bed and took Mildred's hand, I don't want to hear you say that. Do you understand? I'll be with you as long as it takes, and Roy, let him decide how to live his life. He's a big boy, he makes his own choices. Mildred nodded. Thank you, I mean about Roy, it's true, isn't it? Sandra mentally scolded her son. He had put all the responsibility on her, as usual. And what should she say, looking into Mildred's unhappy eyes? Sandra nodded. Yes, Mildred, he has someone, I don't know her, he told me and disappeared, sorry. Mildred squeezed her eyes shut, then opened them wide and smiled. Thank you, the best to know the truth, whatever it is. They were silent for a while, holding hands. Sandra felt the calluses on the palms of Mildred's hands from the chinning bar she practiced on every day. I have dishes to wash, Sandra leaned over to Mildred and kissed her forehead, and you rest, don't overexert your body, you'll only make it worse. If you do that, I'll complain to Leo about you. In the kitchen she quickly washed the dishes, and then sat down on the couch with her legs tucked under her, and unfolded the letter. My name is Nick, and I am Mildred's father. Don't rush to judge me. Yes, I had no part in raising her, but in my defense, I must say that I only recently learned of her existence. Sandra rolled her eyes. Well, yes, of course they all are. Probably wants her to pay him alimony, because there are men like that. They forget about the children, and then when they're in trouble, they show up to demand some kind of payment. One of her friends had such a situation. Her husband left when her son was three years old, and then, when he was 23, he suddenly showed up. He said he was sick and couldn't work, so he demanded child support from his son. I gave you life, you owe me an unrequited debt. Naturally, the man was refused, but amazingly, he thought he had the right. Sandra continued to read. I met Mildred's mother, Donna, during a business trip. Sent to your city on business, I was young, hot. I saw a beautiful girl one day, at a bus stop, approached her to get acquainted, and a love affair began. Don't think, with time I realized that I loved her, I wanted to get married. After a business trip, I often went back to see her and spend time together. Once I went to her house and met Donna's mother. She made a scandal, said that Donna had a fiancé, that he was in the army and would be back soon. She demanded that I leave her daughter alone. And I listened. Why? First, she was persuasive, and second, she showed me pictures. Donna was with a young man. It was a blow to me. I really loved her and dreamed that we would be together. Yes, and for reasons of male solidarity. I left and called her several times, thinking about talking to her, but she didn't want to hear anything. She hung up on me when I was on the horizon. I found out about Donna's death recently, a month ago, by chance. Don't ask for details, you could say I found out through work. A familiar last name, a familiar name, and it turned out that she had a daughter. I found out more about her. Her date of birth tells me that Mildred is my daughter. And when I saw her picture there was no doubt. Mildred looks a lot like me. And so I came to meet her. I understand that it won't be easy. She grew up without me, for sure, Donna said all kinds of nasty things about me, but I really had no idea I had a daughter. If I had known that, there's no way I would have left her. Things would have been different. I'm sorry this letter got too emotional, my thoughts are jumbled, but I hope you can help me. I know you are a close person to Mildred, I know what happened to her. Even if she refuses to talk to me, I still want to meet, at least with you. I want to help in some way, with money, connections, anything. Thank you in advance, Sandra. And below is his phone number. Sandra thought about it. It sounded convincing, but it was a strange story. Why would Grandma Mildred do such a thing? What didn't she like about her daughter's beau? Sandra went to see Mildred. She was awake, reading a book. Can I talk to you? Sandra asked cautiously. Mildred put the book aside. Sure. About what? You were talking about your mother, and you had someone else? 
Mildred raised her eyebrows in surprise. Yes, my grandmother, but she died when I was 12. Did she say anything about your father? Mildred wondered. I don't really remember very well. Grandmother was very characteristic. I know she wanted mom to marry our neighbor. We had a man living next door, I think mom dated him for a while, and then he left for the army. Mom said she didn't like him at all. He was stupid and liked to fight. But my grandmother liked him, just a male role model to her. They fought about it all the time, I remember that. My grandmother thought my mother had missed out on her happiness by giving birth to me by someone she didn't know. My dad seemed to be just having fun with my mom, and then he left. And he told my grandmother that he had a fiancé in another town. It wasn't nice to hear that. Yeah, not the best in-law's story. Sorry, I'm talking too much. That's all right, Mildred smiled nonchalantly, and why do you ask? I was curious, Sandra stood in the doorway, shifting from foot to foot. Should I tell her, or not? Maybe later, but first, talk to this Nick. And Leo texted me that he got me a new stroller. I'll be able to ride around the house, Mildred reported cheerfully, he got it for free, can you believe it? Yeah! Well, Lucky, Sandra winked at Mildred, you'll cook and clean now. Don't you think, I won't leave you idle. She went to her room, and she already knew about the stroller. Only Leo didn't get it for free at all, he spent a lot of money on it. Nancy had already told her that, and that her son had apparently fallen in love with Mildred. Strange how things worked out, I guess she should have poured, her son's wife had fallen in love with another man. And she was glad and hopeful that something would work out between them. Still, life is an amazing thing and totally unpredictable. Before going to bed Sandra texted Nick, I agree to have a meeting, where and what time? He replied immediately, tomorrow at 5 o'clock, downtown. Would that be all right? Entirely, Sandra wrote. At the appointed time she arrived at the central square. She stood looking around and berating herself. She should have at least asked him what he looked like. What should she do now? But he approached her himself. Sandra knew at once that it was Mildred's father. The resemblance was striking, the same eye shape, the same smile. Only he was much taller than Mildred. She was quite short, and Nick was about two meters tall. Good evening, he smiled, I suggest we go out, it's cold after all. Sandra nodded. No wonder Mildred's mother had once had a crush on him. What was it like when he was young? They walked into a cafe, the same one where Sandra had sat with her son until recently. And she felt sad. Roy, what are you doing with your life and your mother's life? So, I take it you've read the letter, Nick began, you want to ask me something? I'm ready to answer. I don't even know, Sandra nervously drummed her fingers on the tabletop, I was wondering how you knew everything. You know, about Mildred, about me? It's simple, the man shrugged, I work for the police. I found out about Donna when we were researching statistics on alcohol poisoning. Mildred said she was poisoned by alcohol surrogate? Saw the name, started looking for information. That's how I found out about Mildred. Didn't believe in such coincidences myself, but you see how it turned out. Yes, amazing, Sandra agreed, you used your own channels to find us, didn't you? Well, yes. I didn't really know what to do, going straight to her was hardly appropriate. After all, the girl didn't know about me. Sandra, I swear I didn't know about her, and I don't understand why Donna's mother would do that, really. She wanted to marry her off to someone else, Sandra said, and she tricked her daughter into believing that you came and told her to tell you that your bride was waiting. And then you disappeared. That was the story. Nick slapped his palm on his forehead. What a fool she is. That's what she did to us. You know, I feel guilty, I could have been more assertive. But Donna just yelled at me in every possible and impossible way and hung up on me. I gave up. And come and talk, frowned Sandra, why are all men like that? You seem to be the strong sex, but when it comes to business, you're afraid. 
If I had known she was pregnant, I would have acted differently, Nick stated firmly. I see, you gave up, and you decided to get on with your life, forgetting about the girl you gave up on, Sandra felt angry at this Nick. And her son is the same way the first obstacle and immediately he gives up. It just happened, Nick frowned, you hardly have the right to judge me and why rake up the past. I know I was stupid, I should have been firm, but it might make you happy that my life didn't work out either. Got married a couple of years later, but it didn't work out, divorced, living alone. Then I found out about Mildred. I'm ready to be firm and I'm going to stand my ground. I hear you, Sandra looked outside. The clouds were thickening in the sky, and she was starting to get a headache. She often had that before a thunderstorm. Will you let us meet? asked Nick softly. I will, of course. She has to decide for herself, don't you think? Sandra smiled with difficulty, she's a grown-up girl, not a child. Thank you. Will you talk to her? Nick glowered, his face even seeming to get younger, I would do anything for you not to leave her. Anything, Sandra pondered. There was one question that bothered her more than any other. Should she try to take advantage of his offer? Nick, my salon burned down recently, they say it was an accident, they forgot to turn on the alarm. And just that day something shorted out in there. And you think it was someone else's fault, Nick frowned, any guesses? Sandra became sad. None. Maybe it's the competitors, but we've always been first, occupied a certain niche. It's unlikely that issues are resolved this way. It's not the 90s anymore to blow up houses and cars and set them on fire. You have no idea how much some people are stuck in the past, Nick chuckled, personally, I'm not surprised. Let's make a deal, I'll bring my resources to help you, and you get Mildred ready for our meeting, please. In the meantime, this is for you, he pulled an envelope from his inner jacket pocket and held it out to Sandra. What is it? she asked, another letter. Money, replied Nick, it's not for you, it's for Mildred. Just don't look at me like you're going to throw it in my face, honestly. Don't spend it, just put it in her account, Mildred's in a difficult situation, she might need the money. Sandra had to agree. Indeed, there was no need to show pride, at least now. She had no permanent source of income left as it was. Thank you, Sandra said and put the envelope in her bag, I'll talk to Mildred. I'll be waiting, Nick nodded. When Sandra returned home, she couldn't find her place. She would begin to clean up, or she would put the rag aside and sit in her chair, staring into nothing, with a fixed stare. I should have told Mildred that she had a father, but how would she take the news? As luck would have it, Leo came in, and they chatted and laughed from time to time in Mildred's room. It was a good thing there was Leo. Without him Sandra probably wouldn't have been able to manage, and it would have been more difficult for Mildred. Finally, Leo went home and Sandra went out to see him off. Before Leo left, he suddenly asked. When will Roy be back? I don't know, why? I guess when he comes back I'll stop going to your place, after all, he's the husband, I don't think he'll be happy about it. Sandra almost said Roy didn't care, but the woman remained silent. And yes, I believe she will walk, Leo smiled, and the important thing is that she believes as well. Closing the doors behind Leo, Sandra thought about hurrying Roy. Let them get a divorce already. Mildred will be a free woman and will be able to manage her life as she wishes. And Leo doesn't seem to care whether she walks or rides in a wheelchair. And Nancy says all Leo does is talk about her making progress. Look what Leo brought, a stroller rolled out into the hallway, quite miniature. Mildred sat in it contentedly, and he also set up this thing, right on the floor, so I can transfer myself, but it's scary so far, I almost fell over. Well, I wanted to surprise you, Mildred's eyes burned with happiness. Should I tell her now or later? Sandra walked over to Mildred and stroked her disheveled hair. Good girl. Nice guy Leo, after all. Yes, he is, Mildred blushed, and strong and so smart. I'm sorry to say this, I'm married to your son, don't you think, it's all. I don't know why myself, just all kinds of thoughts. 
That's okay, Sandra sighed, about Roy we both understand, so consider yourself free and believe me, if you marry Leo, you will have my blessing. Wow. That's so weird. No, I don't want to complicate his life. Understand, I'm embarrassed in front of you too. It's okay, I'll get used to this stroller soon, maybe I'll get a job. I'll start painting people at home, Sharon once advised me to do it. Sharon, Sandra interjected, is that the one who used to work for me? Yeah, nodded Mildred, why don't I make my way to the kitchen? Let me see if I get through the door, or not. Just don't help, please, I'll do it myself. Blushing, Mildred spun the wheels of her stroller. She managed to get to the kitchen without any problems. Mildred wheeled the stroller to the table and laughed. There, now I'll cook while you're gone. That stroller was awful, of course, it didn't go anywhere, but now I'm an independent person. Wait, what was Sharon saying, she suddenly remembered Sandra. Well, I don't even know if I should tell you, Mildred began smoothing the tablecloth on the table, she suddenly started telling everyone to quit your salon. It was so strange and incomprehensible. She told everyone that it's time to start taking clients at home. And then things would be even better. Why didn't you tell me, wondered Sandra. I didn't even talk to you, I saw how much you didn't like me, Mildred was embarrassed, I was shy to say hello to you, and I wouldn't have had the courage to come up and talk about it. I didn't know you were such a nice person. Sandra felt herself begin to shake slightly. I was told that Sharon is kind of dating the owner of the shine salon, maybe that's why. I mean, he doesn't like you, and he didn't want to hire her for some reason. Also weird, right? Shine. Is she dating George? I think so, Mildred looked at her mother-in-law with interest, and do you know anything about him? Sandra sat down on the stool opposite Mildred. I know a little, of course, but he's not a pleasant type. Wooed me at one time, and I didn't understand what he wanted. I mean, he's about 20 years younger. Wooed, wondered Mildred. Yes, there was that, I even went to a restaurant with him once. I knew right away that he wanted to combine our salons. He wanted to make a network. But he has a strange vision, it did not coincide with mine. His shine is not a particularly good place, supposedly do extra fashionable haircuts, but in fact, pass off ordinary work for a special vision. I know, Mildred nodded, the work is below average and the master keeps changing. I know a girl who has worked for him. She says George thinks he's a genius, some new technology he invents and implements, but in practice it's useless. Wait, Sandra grasped her head, couldn't he? Mildred frightenedly clasped her hands over her mouth. Sandra continued. He could have, couldn't he? We had a conflict with Sharon, I fired her, and Sandra stood up abruptly, very likely. First these reviews, then the video, he could have sent that woman to us on purpose, and then he ended up setting the fire. He said he saw me as a competitor, almost the only one. How awful, whispered Mildred, will the police believe you? What if they don't? They will, I'll tell Nick, he'll sort it out, he promised. And who is Nick? Mildred asked. What to do now? Lie or tell the girls the truth? Sandra sat down on the stool again and covered Mildred's hand with hers. Mildred, I have something to tell you. Just promise me you won't be nervous. The news about her father Mildred took it hard. They talked all night. Mildred cried, screaming that she didn't want to know him and didn't need him. And then she asked that Sandra call him right away and ask him to come over. Sandra didn't know what to do, just sat next to Mildred and listened to her and stroked her head like a baby, coaxing her to calm down. They called in the morning. He showed up half an hour later, like he was waiting outside their house. The conversation was difficult. Mildred didn't want to believe Nick's version. He acted patiently and took all of his daughter's insults and accusations and let her talk it out. Sandra could see that it was not easy for him. She herself could only watch from the sidelines. Mildred had to let her feelings out. Finally, the girl calmed down. The three of them drank tea. 
I don't know what will happen next, Mildred admitted, I don't know you at all. We have an opportunity to know a friend, Nick replied, and I'm glad we have it. It would have been scary to go through life without ever knowing you. Sandra was amazed at their resemblance. They even held their cups the same way, raised their left eyebrow the same way when they smiled. Now she could see that both her father and daughter had a mole on their right cheek. No DNA testing was needed. In the evening Sandra went to see Nick off. It turned out that he lived in a hotel near their house. He had specifically chosen that location, Nick, I have some thoughts about my salon. You suspect George, do you, the man grinned, if so, I'm afraid you're right. He ordered the reviews, anyway, and hired a blogger to make negative videos about the salon. Wow, Sandra marveled, you found the information quickly. Sandra, after what you did for Mildred, you have every right to demand anything from me, Nick looked her closely in the eye, and I won't have the slightest opportunity to refuse you. It soon transpired that George was guilty of slandering the reputation of the Sandra Salon. True, his connection to the arson could not be revealed. Nick suspected that it was Sharon who was able to enter the salon and turn off the alarm. She knew exactly how to do it, but it was impossible to prove it. Sandra was afraid that George would only get scared, but Nick promised her that he would never bother Sandra again. Are you going to threaten him? The woman wondered. No, I'll just explain something in a way that even someone as dumb as him will understand. Sandra didn't know what Nick had done, but after a couple of weeks Shine closed and George moved to another town. She decided not to ask how Nick had achieved such a result. The woman realized she didn't want to give up and she would have a salon, a new one, completely different. The two girls who had worked with her before agreed to come back. The new space, the renovations, the advertising, it all took over Sandra's head. Mildred helped her. It turned out she had great taste, so Sandra entrusted the design of the salon to her daughter-in-law. Mildred went back to work, though she couldn't cut hair yet, but she did her clients' makeup. At first for not much money, but more and more people wanted Mildred, and Sandra thought about raising the price for her services. Roy came for a few days to finalize his divorce from Mildred. She took his visit calmly, signing all the papers and not asking why Roy had made such a choice. Sandra realized that Mildred had let her son go, and she was glad of that. Mildred did not deserve to suffer again. Roy Sandra wished him happiness, though the mother herself did not believe that he would be able to hold on to it. Six months after the salon opened, Sandra was celebrating her birthday. She was looking forward to her guests, the table was laid out in the living room, Sandra herself dressed in a new dress, unusually suited to her eyes. The doorbell rang. Mildred, hello, Sandra hugged Mildred, who could hardly stand on her feet. So far, the girl was walking with a cane and very slowly, but she refused to give up the wheelchair, as if she were afraid to let slack and everything would be the same. Hello, Mildred kissed Sandra on the cheek, was the mask done as I asked? Yes, I did. Do you have time to put makeup on, Sandra blushed, I want to look better, it's a holiday after all. Don't worry, daddy's worried too, Mildred winked, I think he really likes you. Sandra was embarrassed. Half an hour later, Sandra didn't recognize herself in the mirror. Mildred could work wonders. No wonder her clients loved her so much. Her eyes looked bigger, her skin looked like porcelain, and her wrinkles were mysteriously smoothed out. Great, admired Sandra, I wish I looked like this every day. The doorbell rang. I'll get it, smiled Mildred, admire yourself for now. Soon they were seated at the table, her friend Nancy and her husband, Leo, who wouldn't leave Mildred's side, and Nick, who had given Sandra a huge bouquet of scarlet roses. There was only one person missing. They were chatting, laughing, discussing plans for the future. Leo, why don't you tell me what you wanted already, Nancy asked her son, stop procrastinating. At work you're brave, but here? Everyone laughed. Well then, so later. It's just that Nancy shared some information with me here, so, Mildred, wait for news. And if anything, daughter, know that I agree. Mildred began nervously touching her favorite gold heart pendant that Sandra had once given her. 
Suddenly there was a message on Sandra's phone. Mom, happy birthday, I'll be there in half an hour, can I? Roy, Sandra sighed and texted back, of course you can, I'm always waiting for you, son. An amazing story, isn't it? Thank you for listening till the end. I sincerely hope that you truly enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and rate this video. See you in the comments and in new releases.